What do we want to see for the Sony Xperia 1 Mark 6? And we know it's going to be coming out in the next couple of months. Sony Xperia 1 Mark 5, I think, was largely a pretty good success. We dropped the price, we got a better chip, we fixed the battery, the heat issues, had some camera improvement stuff. But looking to the future here, what do we need from Sony to be a more successful phone, to have more wide stream, mainstream appeal, and for it to be an overall better phone? Because, I mean, let's face it, not everybody likes this phone for a, diff a lot of different reasons. So, we've already seen the rumors. Likely, we're going to be moving away from the 21 by 9 aspect ratio and dropping down possibly from a 4K to a 2K, otherwise known as Quad HD Plus screen, which is what everybody uses anyway. So, I'm not crazy about that, but it may be happening. But what they need to do is they need to give us more software support. Like, the whole two years of operating system updates thing is... Uh, a bit archaic, especially when you take a look at other phones like the Samsung phones, the Google phones, seven years of operating system updates, seven years of security patches. I think a good meaningful solution here, I think if they even did what everybody was doing last year and what OnePlus is still doing, four years of operating system updates, five years of security patches, I think that would be good. I think that would probably make most people pretty happy. And going in hand with that, I think they need to lower the price. Now, right now you can get the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V on sale for $1199, but when you look around, look around at the landscape, you can get some stuff cheaper. So it's still kind of expensive when you take a look at things on that end. But whenever it came out at $1,399, like they backed it off. The Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV was $1,599. We got to $1,399. I think we need to be $1,199, $1,299 from the get-go. Not like eight months later. <laughs> Not nine months later. We need to be there at the beginning so people are more interested in buying this. So if we can get a couple hundred bucks, $100, $200 off, I think that'll go a long way and make people a lot happier whenever it comes to the phone. Because if you can get a better value, and you can get better software support, so it's going to last longer, that will make people more inclined to want to buy your phone. So I think those are important. I think we got to hang on to the headphone jack. I think we got to hang on to the SD card. I think those are two really important things in the Sony lineup, because it really distinguishes them from other competitors, and it shows what you can do with this as a mobile creator platform. I'd like to see faster charging. That would be nice. And, and a couple other things. So I think we need a better selfie. So the selfie camera is okay. Made some improvements over the years, but I think we need a better high quality selfie camera. I think that would go a long way. I think it would make a lot bigger difference when it comes to folks who look at doing things. I, I've said this for a long time. People almost take more photos with the front camera than they do with the back camera nowadays. Everybody's all about social media, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube shorts, all that stuff. So we really need to step it up and the selfie camera department. I think that's another thing that needs to be fixed. Now, price, we talked about that. We talked about the camera. We talked about the software support. Those are a lot of the big things. And I think that Sony's done a good job with pushing things along with software. We got the Android 14 update really well. I like what they do. It's a very simple, very stock Android experience. So there's not a whole lot of stuff floating out there. Not a lot of crappy bulletware. Not a lot of garbage. Uh, so. Another thing that I would like them to address, though, whenever it comes to this phone, is we really need to do something whenever it comes to facial recognition. We don't have it. Now, I don't really care for it that much, but I think it needs to be there. So I like having the physical fingerprint sen sensor. I think that's a must. I think they need to keep that. I don't really want them to go to the ultrasonic, or I, I don't want them to go to a, a like the optical one that we get with most other phones outside of Samsung. But I think that we need to keep the physical fingerprint scanner. And I think that we need to, we really need facial recognition. I mean, basically every other phone on in the world does it. So I really do think we need to get that at this point. I think we need to keep the shutter button. And I think we need to get these in store somewhere. So you can order them on Best Buy. You can order them on Amazon. You can order them to different places like that. But when it comes to this phone, and we can talk about the launch cycle because they get it. It seems like we, these things get announced in late spring, and then we got to wait four, five, six months before they finally show up. And you can actually get one here in the states. They need to get them out earlier. Like they need they they had a shorter window this last year, but they need to announce them. And then like if we can get them a month or six weeks later, something like that, that would be amazing. But we need to have them in store somewhere. Like I get it. They're not going to be on carrier shelves. You're not going to be able to walk into Verizon and get one. You won't be able to walk into AT and T and get one but if they could at least just get them back into Best Buy. And that's something that OnePlus did with the OnePlus 12. They didn't have them at the carriers, but you could walk right into a Best Buy and get one. Sony, for the longest time, they used to have their phones at Best Buy, where you could pick them up off of the shelf. I know they had some different models that didn't do so great. They didn't sell so well. The prices were high. But uh, that goes back into what I'm talking about here. We need better marketing. We need better sales on it. We need, we need a better price when it comes out. 
We need better support, better availability, better selfie camera, better charging, facial recognition. I mean, and then we need to be able to buy one in the store. So those are kind of all my things. I'm sure there's some other dream list, uh, wish list stuff that's out there that other people are interested in. I'm sure there's something that me looking at this, using this phone, that I've probably missed whenever it comes to nice things that we could have for the phone. But when you look out, when you look out there, like you look at the competition, they have facial recognition. When you look at the competition, a lot of them have really good selfie cameras, especially like the iPhone, especially like the Samsung phones. Uh, they have faster charging. They have much longer support. They have a lot different price offerings. They have better prices for their flagships. I mean, yes, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, $1399. Still a little bit on the expensive side, but you got the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. It bumped up to $1299. But the thing is, is there's a lot more incentives. There's a lot better trade-in deals. There's a lot more people that are going to buy a Samsung phone over a Sony phone. So I don't see a lot of people passing over an S24 Ultra to go spend extra money to go buy a Sony. So if they can get it at like $1199, even $1249, I think $1249 would probably be a good sweet spot. We know this is a niche device. We know they're not going to make a ton of these things. So it's not going to get those profit margins where they're going to be able to sell it cheaper. So if you can get one, they sell it $12.49, maybe it goes on sale a few months later, get it for $10.99, $11.49. If we can get support for four or five years, if they can bump it up a little bit in the selfie department, we already know they're going to, from what we've seen, they're going to have three 48 megapixel cameras on the back using their Exmor sensors. So I think from a photography and videos perspective, it's still going to be out in the front. I think it's still going to be a great conversation to have. I think it's still going to be really good for making content, especially cinematic content. But there's a lot of stuff they need to shore up. A lot of people might not be interested because they can't do facial recognition. I know I like the fingerprint scanner, but some people like to just use you know, face recognition. And some people don't like the physical fingerprint scanner, but I like it in the button. I think it's a good combination. I think it's a good holdover. They're really about the last ones in the U.S. even doing that. So, but I like it. I like that it's there. I think it makes sense, especially with the form factor. You still got the dedicated shutter button. I'm sure they're going to keep that. I heard a rumor someone was talking about they might remove it. If they remove the shutter button off of the phone, like people, are, it's going to be a really big turnoff. Like I don't really see that happening at all. But yeah, I was just thinking about it the other day. I know we're going to be seeing these phones in the next couple of months, but those are kind of the things that I think we need when we look at it from a recipe for success standpoint. There are things that need to be upgraded on this phone. There are things that need to be brought in line with a lot of other flagship phones. The biggest one that most people complain about is support. I mean, it is kind of paltry. It's not that great. So three years, which is basically two operating system updates, three years security patches, if I remember correctly. That's not good. Like that's not going to fly. It didn't really fly well this last year. It's certainly not going to fly well when you see other companies like Samsung and Google going to seven years. Apple basically supports their phones for seven years. So it kind of leaves them as an odd one out, charging a lot of money, not giving you all the features that you should have in a phone that expensive, and then not supporting it for very long. So those are kind of the big things. Like I said, if you've got some ones you want to see on your own, Leave them in the comment section. We can discuss it. We can talk about that. I know i got a lot of Sony fans here. I love the Sony phone. I love the Xperia 1 Mark V. It fixed so many things that went wrong with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. All those terrible heating issues, they really, they really fixed that. They made it a lot better, a lot better battery life. It's a great gaming phone. And, of course, we know we'll get the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3, which will bring it in line with the other Android flagships that just came out a couple of months ago. So that's my dream sheet. That's my wish list for the Xperia 1 Mark VI. Again, we can talk about it. If you enjoyed the video, if you like this stuff, you like Sony content, you're in the right place. Hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you guys next time.